welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then, when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had a breakdown on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. In this installment, we'll cover how to connect your computer, how to maintain it, and a few simple do's and don'ts to keep it functional. First, unpack all the computer equipment from the carton it came in, and locate all the cables and all the paperwork that comes with it. Place all the computer equipment on a flat surface near the television you'll be using. A multi-outlet strip should be nearby to eliminate the need for an extension cord. It should be one of the surge and transient protection type, but it's not mandatory to be one of that type. First, locate the antenna switch box. Notice the ribbon type connector on cable that is attached to it. Connect it to the VHF antenna leads on the back of the television using a small flathead screwdriver or some other similar device. Next, remove the paper backing from the adhesive strip on the back of the switch box and stick it to the television in a place convenient but yet not in the way. Next, locate the video cable. Connect one end of this cable to the mating connector on the side of the switch box. Make sure the switch box is in the position marked computer. Next, locate the jack on the back of the computer marked 2TV. Connect the video cable to this jack. At this point, Make sure the power switch is in the off position. If you have a multi-port interface, connect it to the expansion port connector on the side of the computer. Like so. Make sure that the power switch on the back is also in the off position. Now, if you're going to use a cassette recorder, locate the cassette recorder cable. Which has three small plugs on, on end. One is black, the other two gray. And this type of connector is on the other side. Locate the jack on the back of the computer marked cassette. 
and plug it into this hole. Notice how the notch is connected towards the top. On the other end of the cable, take your black connector, plug it into the jack on the recorder, mark ear. Take the larger gray plug and connect it to the jack on the recorder, marked aux. Take the smaller gray connector, connect it to the jack on the recorder, marked rem. At this point, make sure that the volume level on the recorder is approximately one unit past the halfway point. Most recorders volume controls are measured in increments from 1 to 10. This would mean placing it in the 6 position. If you're going to be using a printer, locate the printer cable. It has a 4-pin plug on each end. Locate the jack on the back of the computer Marked Serial I.O. Again, the notch is to the top. Now take the other end of the cable and connect it to the matching connector on the back of the printer. Again, with the notch to the top. Make sure at this point that the printer's power switch is also in the off position. Now, if you're going to be using a disk drive system, locate the disk controller cartridge. Place this cartridge in slot number four of your multi-port interface with this larger connector down and the label facing towards the back of the multi-port interface. Now if you don't have a multi-port interface, this can also be connected directly into the expansion connector on the back of the computer with the label facing up. This works just as well although you won't have the flexibility that a multi-port interface will give you with the extra slots. At this point, make sure that the slot selector switch on the front of the multi-port interface is in the no slot number four position. If you're going to be using an RS-232 serial cartridge, place it in slot number one of the multi-port interface with the larger connector down and the larger and the label facing the back, as we've done with the disc controller. Notice at the top of the serial cartridge, there's a 25-pin connector. Locate your cable, which has a similar connector, and place it on this connector as so. Make sure it's all the way down. Next, Take your modem or other serial device, which you may have, and connect the other end of this cable to the matching connector. Now, back to this disk drive controller. 
You'll notice we have also a controller cable for the disk drive. There are identical connectors on each end. On a lot of connectors, you'll notice there are numbers on the connector marked 1 through 34. On ones that don't have the marking numbers, check for an odd colored wire on the ribbon cable, which will usually be red. This is the end. We'll be calling pin 1. Connect it with this pin 1 to the right hand side of the connector on your disk controller cable. Take the exact same cable and attach it with the equivalent of pin 1 to the back of the disk drive where the connector is available. Make sure at this point that the disk drive is also off. Now, plug all computer related items into the multi outlet strip. Make sure all the connections on all the cables are nice and tight. Then activate the power switch. If all goes well, you should get a power up message and copyright information on the screen. If not, go over this simple list of troubleshooting procedures. Poor reception or fuzzy display. One, make sure TV set is on channel three. Two, check that all antenna connections are secure. Three, adjust contrast and brightness controls on the television for satisfactory intensities. Mixed TV and computer pictures. Switch computer and television to channel four. Channel three may be being used for broadcasting in your area. The cleaning of the computer and its accessories is very simple. You can clean most of the computer accessories and the computer itself with a damp, lint-free cloth. However, some accessories will require a little bit more care in the cleaning. Well, here's a list of those items and how to clean them. First, in your line printer, you have this carriage guide here which the print head travels on. Keep dust off of it and keep it lubricated with some high grade sewing machine oil or a thin coat of petroleum jelly. Move the print head back and forth across the carriage guide after applying such lubricants to distribute it evenly. You can use a sharp object or some other type, like, uh, like toothpicks or a very sharp screwdriver to remove little pieces of paper, lint, and other such items from the print head itself. After which, replace the cover as you found it. Now, the cassette recorder is a little simpler to clean. Take a small amount of isopropyl alcohol dip a cotton swab in this alcohol and scrub the play and record heads 
of the recorder. You should see some dirt coming off on the swab. Next, we'll be cleaning the disk drive. Using a, a disk cleaning kit similar to this one should be sufficient. Take some of the alcohol of the same type that you used for cleaning the recorder and place some in this area of the disc. Now let's show you exactly how it's done. Now, place the cleaning diskette in the disk drive with this notch towards the top. Close the latch. Next, to complete the cleaning process, we attempt to format the diskette by typing DSKINI0, followed by pressing the Enter key. Notice the disk drive makes a few noises. It'll do this for about 30 seconds. What it's doing is attempting to format or initialize the diskette. This will have no effect whatsoever on the actual disk itself because there's no magnetic surface whatsoever for it to write to. That noise was the verify pass. Now to test the video portion of your computer system, we'll type in a short program. At the end of each line on this program, be sure to press the enter key. That'll allow you to end that line and start the next line. Ready? Okay, let's go to it. Line number 10, clear screen. Line number 20, print, quote, color, test, period, 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 quote. Line number 30, print at 224, comma, quote, quote, semicolon. Line 40, for x equals 0 to 63. Line 50, for y equals 3 to 10. Line 60, C equal INT, open parentheses, X divided by 8 plus 1, close parentheses. Line 70, set, open parentheses, X comma Y comma C, close parentheses. Line 80, next, Y. Line 90, next, X. Now run the program. The program tells us that we've entered the color test and then draws a color bar pattern for us with eight colors in the order of green, yellow, blue, red, buff or white, cyan or gray, magenta or violet, and orange. If you're using a black and white television or monitor, you'll see nothing more than blocks colored in shades of gray, in which case you'll see two bars of lighter shades two of darker shades, then four more lighter shades. Once you've made sure your colors are set to your liking, per, we'll go on to the next part. Now the first thing we're going to do with this little program we've created is save it to either one or both forms 
of magnetic storage media. First, we'll do the cassette tape. Press the rewind button on the recorder and make sure the tape has rewound to its starting position. Then, eject the tape from the recorder and using a pencil or whatever else you have, anything except something that's magnetic or magnetized, and advance the tape to where the clear part of the tape just disappears. Then, place it back in the recorder, close it, and as we mentioned earlier, make sure that the volume control is just above the halfway point, or about six. Now, press the play and record buttons to make sure it's ready to record. Now type in this command. C save, quote, tester, quote, followed by pressing the enter key. The recorder will start the process of recording the data from the program and then stop. Saving the program to disk is a much easier and much faster task. Take a diskette, which has been formatted previously, and place it into the disk drive with the right protect notch on top. Close the latch and type the following command. Save, quote, tester, slash, BAS, quote, followed by pressing the enter key. Now the drive becomes active for a few moments, and then you have a copy of the testing program on the device. Loading a program from cassette or from disk can also be as simple a task as saving. Let's start with loading from cassette. First, press the rewind button on the recorder and let the tape rewind. When it's finished rewinding, press stop and the play button. At this point, again, make sure your volume level on the recorder is just above the halfway point, or six on most recorders. Next, type the following command. C load, followed by pressing the enter key. A letter S will appear at the top left corner of your screen, which means it's doing a search. When the computer finds the program it was looking for, that letter S at the top of the screen will be replaced by a letter F, along with the name of the file it's encountered. At that point, the cassette recorder will stop turning and the program is loaded in. Just like saving, loading from disk can also be an easy and fast experience. Let's get the program we've typed in and saved on disk loaded back into memory. Type the following command in. Load quote tester slash BAS quote followed by pressing the enter key. The disk drive will come on for a few moments making a few noises and then stop. The program is now in memory. Notice how we've added a little something extra on the program when loading from disk. The slash and the letters BAS are what is known as the extension. The extension is used to help the disk controller tell the difference between different types of files. The slash and the letters BAS are what we call the extension. In this case, the letters BAS indicate a basic program. The letters DAT would indicate a data file. 
And the third we went, that we look with is the letters B-I-N. That means a binary file or program. We've gone over a lot of information in this lesson. So before we end this lesson, let's go over a few of the highlights of the information we've covered. First of all, as you remember, the disk cartridge or controller can work without a multi-port interface. Just plug it right into the expansion port on the side of the computer. And we've also learned that we can keep our equipment clean and in working order with simple maintenance methods. We've also gone over those special do's and don'ts, especially that big one of making sure that the computer is the first thing off and the last thing on if we don't have a switch by which we can turn it all off and on at the same time. We've also learned that when we use a cassette recorder, the best place to have the volume control is a little past that halfway point, where on most recorders, it'll be six. We've also learned that the disk drive is used with the pin that we've indicated as pin one or the end with the odd colored wire to the downside on the drive and to the right side on the controller. That's all the time we have for this show. So that's the end of this lesson. See you next time. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and that every person that watched will benefit from the information we've supplied. Remember that using your computer is a process best learned by repetition, so spend a little time with the computer and get to know the information we've given. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed a show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.